Hi everyone, welcome to understanding the basic ship stability terms part 2. I hope you have watched part 1 where I start with some of the basic terms many of which I am sure you were familiar with but I was getting a lot of questions from students all over the world uh, where I was talking about advanced ship stability problems but they were asking me questions about the basic ship stability terms. So I thought I will make a series of videos where I explain the basic ship stability terms using pictures for your understanding. So let's get started. Thank you for watching Steering Mariners. So today we'll continue from where we left off last time and I'm going to talk about the center of gravity of a vessel. But before I do that, I must explain a little bit about the gravity or the concept of gravity, which says that whatever goes up must come down. That is the basic principle of gravity that was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton, who was sitting under a tree and watched an apple fall from the tree, which gave him the idea that whatever goes up must come down or that objects are pulled by the gravitational force of the earth. So if you throw a ball in the air, it will soon come back in response to the earth's gravitational pull. Now, if you think about it from a ball's perspective, you can see that any object or if you look at a ball, then you can see that the geometric center of the ball, rather not the geometric center, but based on the mass of the ball, the center of gravity of the ball will be exactly at its geometric center. That is where the weight is concentrated. That is the uh, geometric center or the center of gravity of the ball. Right. That is when I say geometric center, I mean the center of gravity. I mean the where the mass is concentrated. That is the centroid of the mass of the body. Now, center of gravity is the point at which the whole weight of the body can be said to be acting vertically downwards. And that is why anything that goes up eventually comes down as well. Now, if you think about it from a vessel's perspective, you can see that the center of gravity of a vessel depends upon the weight distribution within the vessel. And the position of the center of gravity can be found by use of an inclining experiment. Now I have explained inclining experiment in a separate video. You can watch that video. You will find that video in the playlist or you can go down in the description section of this video and find the link to that video. Anyhow, when it comes to the vessel, the height of the center of gravity is measured vertically from a reference point, which is usually the keel of the vessel. So here we are talking about the vertical distance of the center of gravity from the keel of the vessel. Similarly, we'll also talk about the vertical center of the center of buoyancy or rather the vertical distance of the center of buoyancy from the keel of the vessel. But as we'll progress with these terms, you will realize that the center of gravity can also be plotted with reference to the longitudinal direction where the reference point is the aft perpendicular. So that is of course called LCG or the longitudinal center of gravity. Here we are talking about the vertical distance of the center of gravity from the keel. When we talk about center of gravity, we also have to talk about center of buoyancy of a vessel. So buoyancy or the basic concept of the buoyancy can be explained. If I show you how, if you try to sink a plastic ball into the water, you will realize that the, if the ball is pushed underwater, it will soon bob up again. Now the fact that it bobs up again or it comes back on the surface, that concept is the force which is called buoyancy. It's because of buoyancy that it comes back up. This is how we swim in the water as well based on the Archimedes principle that if our weight or the concentration of our weight is balanced by the uh, water or the force of the water which is called buoyancy, we float. Otherwise, if our, if our weight is much heavier than the force of the buoyancy, then we will sink. So the ship is the same as well. All right. So if we talk about the center of buoyancy, the center of the buoyancy of a vessel is the point through which the force of buoyancy is considered to act vertically upwards. So the center of gravity was acting downwards and the center of buoyancy acts vertically upwards. Now the center of buoyancy is the geometric center of the underwater volume or the underwater section of the vessel. All right. So understand the difference. Center of gravity was the geometric center of the body. That is where the mass of the body is concentrated. Whereas center of buoyancy is the geometric center of the underwater portion of the vessel. Now, because of the shape of the hull of a vessel, 
is known, a ship designer can calculate the center of buoyancy for the various angles of load and heel or list as well. This brings us to the concept of transfer stability. Now transfer stability is when a vessel is floating upright in the water, in still water, the center of the buoyancy which creates the up thrust and the center of the gravity which is acting downwards and creates the down thrust will be found to be in line with each other vertically above the keel. All right, and this is what you can see on your screen where the center of buoyancy, the center of gravity and the keel all are in one vertical line. They are balanced and that is why the ship is floating in the water or in still water. As soon as a vessel is inclined by an external force, let's say, right, this is called heel as we discussed in the first part of the video. Now we are talking about vessel being inclined by an external force that is winds or waves. We are not talking about the movement of the weights within the vessel. All right. If there is a movement of weight within the vessel, that will create a shift in the center of gravity. But here the vessel is being inclined due to external forces such as heel, such as wind and waves. In that case, you can see a wedge of the buoyancy is brought out of the water on one side and a similar wedge of the buoyancy is immersed on the other side. Basically, the center of the buoyancy shifts towards the wedge that is immersed in the water. All right, so but there is a wedge which is out of the water now and there is a wedge which is inside the water. So when I say wedge, I mean that triangular portion of the vessel which you can see on your left side is a slightly dark colored portion. That is the wedge. All right, now the center of buoyancy being the center of the underwater section therefore moves from point B to B1. All right, because center of buoyancy is always the centroid of the underwater portion of the ship's hull and that is why it moves from B to B1 as the wedge immerses in the water with the angle of heat. Now as soon as the center of buoyancy shifts towards the immersed portion of the or the immersed wedge of the vessel, the vertical line drawn from the center of the buoyancy at a consecutive angle of heel will intersect at a point called the metacenter. The metacenter is denoted by the letter M and this can be considered as being similar to a pivot point of a vessel when the vessel is being inclined at small angles of heel. So as soon as the vessel heals, a wedge of the vessel immersed itself in the water the center of the buoyancy shifts from B to B1 and a vertical line drawn upwards from B1 cuts the vertical line or the vertical center line at a point called M which is called the meta center of the vessel. A ship is said to be in stable equilibrium if when inclined she returns to the vertical position or she returns to the upright position. For this to occur the center of gravity must be below the meta center as you see in the screen here or rather as you see on the screen here. All right. So the center of gravity is below the meta center and whenever that is the case and I will tell you why this happens when we talk about writing lever sometime in other parts of the videos but today we will not go into writing lever. So because of the center of gravity being below the meta center let's say that it creates a lever which brings the vessel back to the upright condition and that is when the vessel is said to be in equilibrium. Now what is unstable equilibrium? When a, a stable vessel in the upright position is said to have a positive metacentric height. That is when the metacenter is found to be above the center of gravity. This is usually referred to as having positive GM. Now this was shown in the slide before as well. The distance between G and M is then known as metacentric height. So as long as the G is below M, which was the previous slide in this slide, of course, we are talking about unstable equilibrium. But in the previous slide, when the G was below M, that height is called metacentric height and the GM will be positive. However, what you see on your screens right now is unstable equilibrium. Here, the center of the gravity of the vessel has moved above the metacenter. And here the vessel is said to have a negative GM. When inclined to a small angle, a vessel in this condition will tend to heal further over and could be in danger of capsizing. And that's why vessels avoid sailing with negative GM. People often ask me 
why angle of load is unstable equilibrium or neutral equilibrium i'll answer that question when i explain neutral equilibrium so in unstable equilibrium the center of gravity is above the meter center it forms a negative gm and in this condition a vessel may heel further over and could be in danger of capsizing and i'll explain the reason is because there is no appropriate righting lever to bring the vessel back to the upright condition finally we have the neutral equilibrium now the neutral equilibrium is when the position of the vessel's center of gravity coincides with the meter center they both become the same position there is zero gm there is not a positive gm there is no negative gm the gm is absolutely zero metacentric height is zero and if inclined to a small angle it tends to remain at the same angle of heel now this position is called the angle of load not not the vessel at neutral equilibrium but from neutral equilibrium if the vessel heels it remains at that angle of heel because there is no writing lever and it uh, it is called the neutral equilibrium now often students ask me why angle of lol is neutral equilibrium or not unstable equilibrium for me angle of lol is a progressive stage from the unstable equilibrium to the neutral equilibrium and that is why i consider angle of lol a stage of both unstable as well as neutral equilibrium because initially when the vessel has negative gm of course it's unstable equilibrium but it is a progression from the unstable equilibrium which goes into the neutral equilibrium where there is no writing lever there is no writing lever for the vessel to come back to the original position and that is why angle of lol is actually a progression of the neutral equilibrium but it all starts from when the vessel will have a negative gm or no gm at all you know it is how it progresses in stages so i would avoid sailing out with a negative gm it has happened in the past people do sail out with negative gm sometimes it's not unheard of but yes it is always avoided because from neutral equilibrium it's very easy to shift to a or rather from an unstable equilibrium it is very easy to shift to a neutral equilibrium and then develop an angle of lol so i always tell my students that angle of lol is of course a condition of the neutral equilibrium but it is progressively obtained when you have unstable equilibrium finally we'll talk about writing lever i thought i had writing lever i have not included in this uh, slides but i have write, included writing lever in the slide as well so as you can see here writing lever is the letter gz so what is writing lever so when the vessel is heeled by an external force like strong winds or waves the center of gravity of a vessel is unaffected by the heel it remains where it is the center of buoyancy has shifted from b to b1 but the center of gravity remains where it is because there is no internal shift of weights now the center of gravity remains unaffected by the heel and the weight is considered to act vertically downwards through the point g the center of buoyancy always being the center of the underwater section has of course moved to the new position b1 as we discussed before and the force of buoyancy which is equal to the weight of water being displaced is considered to act vertically up through the center of buoyancy and the meter center where it cuts the center line now the distance from the center of gravity to a vertical line from the point b1 to the b meter center is called the writing lever so this distance can be measured and it is usually referred to as gz so gz is the writing lever so the popular formula is of course gz over gm equals sin theta or gz equals gm sin theta where theta is the angle of heel therefore the force involved in returning the vessel to the upright position is the weight of the vessel bearing down through the center of gravity and multiplied by the writing lever this is referred to as the moment of statical stability the center of gravity of a vessel has a distinct effect on the writing lever and consequently the ability of the vessel to return to the upright position should the center of gravity be very close to the meter center the vessel will have only a small metacentric height and the writing lever gz also is of a small volume therefore the forces involved in returning the vessel to the upright position will be considerably less than that of the previous illustration and that is why i guys told you that i know angle of lol is a stage that is achieved after neutral equilibrium but for me i feel that right at the negative gm the onset 
of the angle of roll starts because as you can see here if the negative gm will have a negative gm value so the writing lever will also be negative from there to progress to a neutral equilibrium and further to an angle of roll is much easier so you can see here here the gm is positive but the writing lever is so small that uh, the effect on operating the vessel after angle of heel is much lesser so imagine what will happen if you have a negative gz due to unstable equilibrium or if you have no gz at all because of stable or other neutral equilibrium all right i think these definitions and these concepts are very important for you guys to understand if you want to go ahead and solve advanced or basic problems in ship stability in my next video which will be part 3 i will talk about stiff and tender ships i will talk about angle of roll i will talk about what happens when you suspend weight from a crane um, the concept of free surface effect in different scenarios we will talk about stability curves and i want to keep on this discussion about basic ship stability terms because i realize that students are solving questions but still they don't have a very good understanding of some of these basic terms Uh, they need to have you need to have a very thorough and strong foundation of these terms if you want to go ahead and solve basic or even advanced ship stability problems so thank you guys for watching the video and i'll see you soon with my next video uh, and thank you for watching and all the best with your studies guys bye for now